Hey everybody, welcome to the live stream and thank you for being so fantastic and patient. I am having all sorts of technical difficulties today. Like you, I think it looks like my skin looks crazy in here. So let's see if we can't fix that a little bit. Yikes, there's so many te technical difficulties today. But you guys are awesome. You guys are hanging in there with me and making it happen. We got people jumping in the chat. We got Emmanuel and Joe Dorgu and all sorts of cool people. I'm just popping my chat out so I can see everybody. Sarmada Lee is still here and oh man, people come from all over. Let me know where you're coming from because today's stream is all about a recap of the series I just put out uh, where I designed and developed a mobile application for iOS and Android. I use Bravo Studio to do that. Um, Emmanuel says it's 7, 11 p.m. in Ethiopia. All right, all right, sounds cool. Super fun, amazing everyone joining me from around the world, really cool. Yeah, if you didn't know, I just launched an app on on the, the both of the, the app stores and I did it without touching a single line of code and I did it using an app called Bravo Studio. Um, and so I outlined the whole process and that's what we're gonna kinda do today. We're gonna outline the whole, we're gonna just do a quick overview of the process. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of work on my application and then I'm going to, um, and then I'm going to probably uh, take a bunch of questions. So uh, very cool, people come from Morocco and very, very cool, okay, awesome. Um, well, let's do this. Why don't we jump into my screen and see what we got going on. I am in Figma today. If you're gonna use Bravo, uh, you're gonna have to use Figma right now. Although a little birdie told me, little birdie told me they're starting to test out XD um, and make that a thing as well. Um, I wish I could show you, mm, there's no way that I can show you my app uh, without without just going like this, all right? So uh, let's see if we can make that happen real quick. Uh, okay, can, can we see? Yeah, well, let's just go like this. All right, here's my phone. And if we just scroll over a little bit, this is gonna be real ugly, but here is my app uh, right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap it, open it up. That's my application right there. I'm gonna turn the brightness way down so maybe you can see it a little bit. There it is. It's a board game app, right? And the contents of the app don't really matter if you're not into it, that's fine. But this application allows me to have uh, like hundreds and hundreds of list listings of board games. And each one of those listings has all the information. It has videos that you can tap and play, it has all sorts of cool stuff. That's my application. You can download it. It's called Cardboard Nerd. I think the links are down in the description of this live stream. Um, but I launched that thing without a single line of code, and this is where I started right here inside of Figma. Okay, so um, if for those of you that didn't watch the series, let's do a quick overview so you can see what it is that we are talking about. I'm in my Figma file right now. I got a bunch of screens. It doesn't look super well put together. It doesn't look super clean. This doesn't feel good to me right? Like uh, just naturally speaking on how I would hand off a design file. Like I have a, um, I have a big giant app icon over here and I have this launch screen. I have a notification screen. And then I have like these empty spots. Like they're just, they're templates, right? They're nothing special. Um, and it's like, if I was going to present this to somebody, I would most likely want to fill out all the information, right? Like I'd want these to like, I'll fill out the page, like boom, 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 like that. But we don't want that inside of Figma for right now. We don't want that when we're using Bravo Studio. We're gonna create templates. So here's the workflow. If you don't know much about what I'm talking about here, um, <laughs> Emmanuel says I should create an app called Jesse Showalter. Uh, <laughs> so we can see the videos of you. You just come to my YouTube channel for that. What are you talking about? They're, they're always right here. Okay, so uh, the idea is that you're gonna design templates inside of Figma. So here's a list. This is gonna be like a list view of top 100 games. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that information. Here's another list of hot games. Some way I'm gonna designate hot games. Here's a news list, right? And then here's a games detail page with all the information that is inside of it. Here's the basic workflow. I'm working inside of Figma right now. I'm gonna leave some special tags. You'll notice all of this strange nomenclature over here on my layers. That's me using Bravo tags. Then when I'm done, I'm gonna come into Bravo and I'm going to upload my Figma file. And so you can see all my screens that are represented here. 
Once I have my design screens inside of Bravo Studio, I'm then going to create a data collection, okay? So we come over to the data library and I have a data collection called Cardboard Nerd that has a bunch of get requests. You can do push re or post requests, you can do you know draft or, or uh, all the different types of URLs like put, patch, delete, lots of functionality in here, but you can create this library of API calls. Okay, where's that API call coming from? Well, for me and my project, it was coming from um, it was coming from Airtable, okay? So it's coming from Airtable and uh, boop, 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 boop. And here is my spreadsheet inside of Airtable. It's just a big spreadsheet. That's all a database is, right? So I'm using Airtable as my database. It has all the games in it and it has all the information, all right? Like, so here's the rank of the game, the release date, the category. Is it a hot game, right? I can click that on or off. Ratings, player account, descriptions. I even have like, the types of type of game it is and links and images, all that kind of stuff. So I've created this database of information and then I've told Bravo, hey Bravo, go out and get that information, okay? And then present that information to me so I can do what? So that I can bind that information to my screens, for instance, so that I can come into my news articles. See over here in my database, I have a news tab that has all these different articles. It's basically like creating my own blog without having to install a WordPress or create a blog. I say, hey, I'll see each one of these listings of blog articles, I wanna put them, remember in my Figma file, inside of my news template and I want them to I want them to repeat down the page. Just fill that thing up. So what do I do? I come into the data binding UI inside of Bravo and I say, hey, take that area that's an article, right? Take that article template and I want you to plug in the information that I have inside. See where it says article image data, article title data. That's what I named my layers. Now. Let's go back in time, let's rewind. I'm giving you like the two minute summary, three minute summary of how to use Bravo. How did I define that area so that I can bind data inside of it? I wrapped it inside of an article and I made it a special Bravo tag. That's what they call them, Bravo tags called container. Then inside of each one of those, I just named each one of them. I, for my own personal workflow, I put an asterisk in front of it and I put the word data after it. Now I know that that's something that needs to be filled in. This background, the white card, it doesn't need to be filled in, right? So once that happened and I uploaded it to Bravo, once I get here, I say, oh look, this is an area that needs to be filled in with data. What data? My article image. Give me the image or how about the title? Give me, and I come over and select it, what do I want? I want the title. Cool. So I just plug it in and then immediately you're able to use their viewing app, Bravo's viewing app called Bravo Vision to view your application. So once I'm here, I've bound all the data today together. You can see all of the apps that are in my in my Bravo Studio, I click on my app, it's gonna load my application up, and then hopefully in a second, boom, boom, there's my app, there's my notification screen. I press enter now and get into my app. I can click into each one of these, and boom, I am rocking and rolling, and it's bound, here's my news feed. it's bound all that data so that it repeats all of those entries inside of my database into my into my app, okay? So that's the basic premise of Bravo Studio, okay? Um, let's answer some questions really quick. I think it's question and answer time with Jesse before we go too much further. Okay, Emmanuel says that seems really hard and complex. It's actually not. So consider this. To actually get an application up in the App Store, it would take you, oh, yeah, I mean, you'd have to learn Swift you'd have to learn Android Studio, or you'd have to pay a lot of money to get somebody else to do it. This is actually very a very simple process, okay? And I'm gonna show you some more of the little complexities that, that make you go, oh wow. If my summary seemed real jarbled and confusing, you should watch the series. It's a four part series I just put out. It literally lays out what is Bravo Studio. Part two is let's set up our Figma file. Part three is let's connect data from the database. And the connect part four is Let's go through the process of putting this thing on the App Store. Super easy, okay? So it's actually a lot easier than it seems. Let's, let's uh, Monty ask a question. Is it possible to let users of the app add pictures, new data? I'd like to create an app that lets people search, find, and add locations for ping pong. Absolutely, what a great idea. Oh my gosh, that excites me so much. Okay, check it out. You just asked a great question. So 
the minute that I launched, not the minute, but like the day after I launched my app, it's an app that you can put board games on. So I was the one, check it out. I was the one that went in and created all of these data entries, right? I was the one that went in and created every single one of these games. There's over 150 games in here right now. Guess what? There's like, uh, there's a famous uh, uh, game website called Board Game Geek. Okay, let's just, I'll show you. BoardGameGeek.com. Board Game Geek has over 100,000 entries of board games. But the reason I made my app is because if you look at one of these games, it is there is an intense amount of information. It is scary to people, right? So I wanted to have a simpler, a little bit more user-friendly way for people to look at games. But I can't fill in over 100,000 games myself. So the day after I launched my app, this is the answer to Monty's question, somebody wrote me and said, hey, how do I get my, they were like a publisher. They have like three or four games they've made themselves. They said, how do I get my app or my game onto your app. And I said, well, I don't know, let me figure it out. So there's a few different ways you can do it. One of the ways you could do it is by creating a put requests or push requests, right? So you could come into your, uh, into your Bravo studio or, uh, and then into your data library and you could set up a new API request that would post information. Okay, so what does this mean? This means, watch, I'm gonna go over to Bravo Studios Notion documentation, okay? So uh, let's go down to forms. This is a super helpful section, okay? This whole thing right here, this master task list is super helpful. This allows you to put actual form elements into your uh, application and then bind them all together and say, hey, take this and add it to your database. That's one way you can do it is with a put request, right? Instead of getting information, you could post, excuse me, post request. You could post that information. You could also uh, patch or put that information, which means you could update and edit information. You can connect your, your database to Firebase um, or your application to Firebase and have login credentials, have people create accounts. And then every time they create an account, it stores that information and it's linked to their account. You could totally do that. You could do all of this using Airtable. Here's another, here's the simple way because he, this guy messaged me and said, I want to put my board games on your application. I said, I want to have it to you tomorrow. So I made it really, really simple. I went back into my, uh, my Airtable and I created, there's all sorts of different things you can do. You can create different views, calendars, whatever. I created a form. Here's a form, okay, that I created and it has all of the, areas of my spreadsheet or my database, right? It has every single column. And so I took some of those out that I didn't want them to have access to. And I said, hey, submit a game to my app, put in the name, all that information. And then I made it so that you can't submit the form unless, it be, unless you put it into a draft status. It's a draft game, right? Then you submit it. What happens if you submit a game? Watch this, check this out. I'm gonna go into my drafts right now. I have only one draft there, right? Check this out. You could open the form. Here it is right here. Let's do a test, right? Uh, who, 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 uh, your game title is Monty, right? It's a one to four, it's uh, 30 to 60, and then we're just gonna put test. And we're just gonna put test. Okay, let's just keep putting the word test in all of these. Uh, BGG rating, let's give it a nine. Okay, artist, boom, boom, boom. Uh, no URL no image, uh, maybe it came out in 2020, no link, no image, pick a few of these mechanics that it represents, hit draft, submit, oop, I missed the main game image, dug on it. We have to submit one of those, okay? So let's just come in and grab one of those really quickly. So I, you're gonna have to have a game image if you wanna present your game. Boom, 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 let's grab a game image from the web Pop it in there. Okay, now let's submit the game. So you're you're a game designer. You submitted the game. It says, hey, thanks for submitting your game. We'll review it. Let's come back. Immediately, it shows up. Look, the game is inside of my database. They just added information, right? And I can take it, and the moment that I move it over from draft to published, boom, it's now inside of my app. It's inside of the game, right? So um, I could then find it. Where's that game that we just put in there called Monty? Monty. There it is. There's our game, right? So it's literally because I just updated this, 
it's in the app right now. It's not, I'm, I could prove it to you. Here we go. Let's, well, I'm not going to prove it to you right now. It's hard to show it on the screen, but it's in the app right now. I don't want it in the app, so I'm going to delete that record. Boom. I have control over my database, but this allows people to submit games, submit information to the database. And so you could absolutely do something as simple as this, which would be, hey, uh, just if you want to have like a, a form inside of Airtable and say, submit any any sort of uh, ping pong place that you find, put it right here, a location, a Google map link, whatever, and then it would plug right into your database, bam, done, easy. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to use the post uh, uh, API request um, inside of, yeah, inside, this is easy, it's amazing, okay. Um, we can add a game in Bravo Studio. Yep, absolutely. So sometimes I see a notification that say container is not fixed, uh, what does that mean? Okay, so let's talk about containers really quick. I'm not sure 100% what your question is, but um, here's the basics of containers, okay? So a container, for all of you that don't know, let's see who's asking, Emmanuel was asking about containers. When you set up Bravo Studio, if you've ever developed a website, you can kind of think about it like that. You have to set up these things called containers. Let's look at our detail screen here. I'm gonna close all the layers, but you can see each one of these layers, most of them have the word, a little open close square bracket and the word container. And as I hover over them, you can see on the right hand side in the actual artboard, you can see the actual container. It's almost like a div block or block level element in a website. They all have to stack on top of each other and repeat, okay? If, uh, if Now they don't necessarily have to stack on top of each other, but like for instance, I was just brainstorming a new category screen for my app. You can put them side by side and they will repeat left to right, top to bottom as well. So that's a thing you can do as well. So similarly, like here's another version of a possible category screen, just a concept I was working on for my app. I'm gonna put each of these inside of a container and that container should take up the entire width of the screen on my artboard. The reason you do that is so Bravo Studio can identify that as information that you can then bind data inside of. So maybe you didn't have your information inside of a container. That's maybe, maybe that's the question or maybe that's the answer to your question. I don't know. But um, that's, you have to create things inside of a container. So you can think of the, or the artboard itself, the frame of the artboard in Figma as a, as the master or like the, the parent element. And then inside you have the children element or the child elements, which are the containers that hold data. And then the grandchildren are the actual pieces of information, which I like to kind of put a little asterisk and the word data on. Now there's a whole nother set of Bravo tags that you can use. Like you can see this Bravo tag I have on here is called Flexo. That allows this uh, text to flex and can like grow the area of that container. Does that make sense? Okay, there's a lot of other uh, like Bravo tags. Like for instance, on my artboard, I have one that says status bar dark. That's gonna put a status bar there. Or transitions push left. Or this one has a refresh, a pull to refresh. I just drop that right there and it, it makes all that functionality happen, right? You wanna go back button? Cool, I put an action, go back, right? And also I put this layer which makes it sticky, like a sticky layer. It layers it on top of things. That's another thing I did. That way when I scroll, that button stays fixed. Here's a different one. This is the uh, the share, action share, and I put a like a hard-coded URL. So anytime somebody tries to share something, it shares the website of the application. Here is another one. This is a video. Uh, we click inside of the video and we have the, the data action open URL. So I'm going to have it open a video URL and it opens up a web player like right inside of the application. Easy. Cool. Um, all right. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah, uh, you live in Berlin and oh, ping pong is the national sport here. Um, cool. The only two options to show them on the map are super messy and not intuitive. Okay. So this, that's a great opportunity for you to make something that's really beautiful, really easy, and and if you watch the video series, I promise you, it'll it'll quell, it'll just curb that learning curve. It'll make it easier to learn Bravo Studio. I got my application up and running in realistically about four or five days, and that included design, learning curve of understanding Bravo Studio, setting up my file, getting all the data like set up, building my database, and then launching it. Four or five days. Four or five days. Are you kidding me? That's crazy to build a mobile app. Oh my goodness. 
So Emmanuel, thank you so much for the compliment. Uh, I'm glad that you understand containers. It's an important thing. Um, let's see. Monty says, great work around with the form. Yeah, post requests are a paid feature in Bravo. That's true. They are probably a paid feature, but the Airtable is a really great, easy workaround. I encourage you though to, um, I mean, I was just thinking the other day, about some of the different things uh, that I can do. One of the things that I'm, I'm not ready to do, to do yet is my, the only things that my app do are display information, right? So I have three tabs in my app. I could show you the top 100 from Board Game Geek. I can show you games that I've curated and marked as hot games. And then I have a news section. And when you click on a news article, it just links you out to somewhere else. So right now I'm just pulling information but I do want people to actually post information. So sooner or later, I'm gonna to have to create Firebase integration on my app where people can create a, an account and then they can create favorites. They could look at a game and they could then heart it and it would go in their favorites list and almost build like a collection of their own, right? And then they could share that collection to people. That's, that's where I'm going, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but you know, one thing at a time, little bits at a time, very cool. Um, can anybody reply, is this UI or UX or what is this, Ancor says. This is actually mobile app development without touching any code. Um, what I'm, I designed the UI and the UX to this experience in Figma, but then I used Bravo Studio to bring it to life and actually get it in the app. I actually got it in the app store, check it out. We can go to uh, the website. You can see here's my app, right? And I can look, let's open them up. They're available. Here it is in the iOS app store. This is my app. Here it is in the Google Play store. Here's my app, right? They're available for you to download for freezies, which is crazy. It's awesome. All right, let's keep answering some questions. What other questions? Uh, does it cost to go on the store? Good question. Yes. So it will cost you $99 a year to join the Apple developer program. And then it costs you $25, I think it was, to go into the Google uh, the Google developer program. So total of $124 it cost me to become uh, yearly, annually, to become a member of those developer programs to launch my application. Now, um, it, you know, it, it, if you really, really want to put an app in the app store, that's what you gotta pay. You gotta pay the price, you gotta pay the cost. But it's actually not that bad, considering the amount of joy and happiness and pride I have for actually getting my first app in the app store. Pretty cool. Um, okay, uh, Vipin asks, hi Jesse, if I wanna create a chat-based app, how would Bravo help me in connecting me with my friends and others who want to use my app? Man, that is a good question. Um, that seems like complex functionality. I'm gonna drink my Legend Spicy Nootropic drink while I think about that. How would you build a chat-based app for you and your friends? Okay, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. It would probably require like a premium paid account in Bravo because you, you're going to need to post information. I'm thinking, okay, I'm just brainstorming. You're going to create an Airtable database. In that Airtable database, you are going to, I haven't played with it yet. Oh man, it's because that's where we start getting a little bit more complex. I'm probably going to have to get there, but you can create relationships between certain areas of your database. Yep, sorry, I'm thinking as I go. You can create relationships. So you could create one uh, board that is posts, okay? Then you can create another board that is users and you can create another board that is comments, right? So yep, yep, I'm thinking about it. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna try it. I don't know, let's, let's just, I, I have no idea. I have no idea, start from scratch, okay? So, okay, here you go, you have we're gonna call this chat. This, that's not how you spell chat at all, okay? I'm just, I'm just throwing out some ideas, right? So you would have this first table that you would call posts, right? Right, And then you, whatever, the title of the post and the description and an image as an attachment. Um, and then you can get rid of this, you don't need this field, something like that, right? Then you can create another one, create an empty table. You'd call this one users, okay? You connect this one to Firebase, that'd be the name of the user. Um, you know, name, password, something else, whatever. You create that one. Then you'd create one called, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know, that'd be interesting. You probably have to have a field in here called comments and you'd have to use, boom, 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 boom. There's a way to do relationships linked to another record like that. See that? So you'd have to connect it to users or something. 
Um, there's a way to do this. I don't know. I'm not a database master yet, and I haven't played with uh, the advanced functionality. But in my mind, that's what I'm kind of thinking, right? You'd create one for posts, you'd create one for users, there'd be a comment section, and then each user would have an ID, and that user could leave comments on that post, and they would be relational. And then in your app, you could see the posts, you'd be logged in as the user, you'd be able to tap on the comment section, fill it out, press send, and it would post that information from your user account to that specific post ID, and then it would build the post, and you guys would be able to comment on each other's stuff. You could build like Instagram or Twitter, basically, um, on using Bravo Studio. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. I might have misspoken. That's a little bit more complex, but it could be a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can use, Joe Dorgu says, can I use Firebase for free? I'm pretty sure you can. I actually have to, one thing I didn't do is, let's go back over, let's talk about Firebase for a second. One thing that I didn't do is inside of my project, you can come in here and in the settings, or excuse me, notifications, you can see I can actually send push notifications. I only in my settings set up uh, my Apple notifications. Um, so, but I need to actually go set up an Android Firebase account for free and then put my server key and sender ID in here so that my Android users are getting notifications as well. That's something I need to do because I haven't done that yet. So, um, I'm going to be getting on that. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. It's per account. Then you can publish unlimited apps. Yes. Pedro. Pedro, uh, is actually, uh, he works over at Bravo. Thanks for being here, Pedro. What's up, bro? Um, yeah, so you pay an account and then you can publish unlimited unlimited apps, which is super duper cool. Like you can see over here, let's look at the Bravo dashboard really quickly. I have a bunch of apps. A lot of them are just test apps. So you can go into the sample app section that Bravo provides you and they have a bunch like here's a foodies app or like a Spotify music app or to-do list or whatever, a task app. And then you press on one of those here. Let's do it. Here's a tech conference app. It's gonna duplicate that project into boop, into my apps i can open it up right i can see where the data is bound most likely boom hopefully uh, maybe uh, let's go into data collections and boop, 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 boop. yeah well you can see watching my data library here's my my foodies uh database it has all the stuff for the foodies project and then you go into foodies this is one that was provided by bravo you can click into it and you can see all the information that's connected. So they give you kind of some samples to start testing out. You can immediately test that out in, in Bravo Vision and see how it all plays out. You can update things, pretty cool, pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, you can have unlimited applications. I have another two ideas for applications I might be launching soon. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, yeah, somebody said something about FigSite. That's a pretty cool no-code tool that turns Figma into websites. That's awesome. We're talking about Bravo Studio today. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with different screen resolutions and breakpoints in Bravo? Uh, so there is some flexibility, um, but when your I, when your I, mobile application gets viewed in a an iPad, it basically stays in the mobile or um, or phone size, like inside of it. So it's like you can view it inside that that thing. It doesn't expand, and it doesn't do all that stuff yet. So uh, Bravo is making huge strides. Uh, just so, sorry, let me slow down. Bravo doesn't support quite yet complex. Uh, like auto layout and resizing features inside of Figma, okay? So like, uh, for instance, the reason here, um, I had to actually just cut off the text here for the game name. So if the game name is really, really long, I couldn't get that to expand because the rule in Bravo is that the flexo tag, if you want something to flex, it has to be the last item inside of a container. See how these ones are flexo tags? and I've put them inside of a container so that it can expand the section. So I can't have, I can't have, boo, 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 boo. I can't have this one flex because I have things underneath it, layout purpose, right? Layout wise that I want it to stay there. So it doesn't support really complex auto resizing stuff yet. Although I bet you they're gonna get there. I most, most likely they are gonna get there at some point and support those auto layouts inside of auto layouts because auto layouts it's so powerful inside of um, inside of Figma, but you can, there is some basic kind of resizing that it, I think it does support. So I set these up just to center the the uh, my navigation buttons. These will center and keep the icon and the text in the middle. I did do that. That's a thing. Um, so just know that right now it's just going to plop your mobile 
your mobile design inside of the iPad. It'll be cut off all around. It'll still work. It just won't be like, wow, look at this ginormous iPad version of it quite yet, but maybe they'll get there, okay? Uh, ooh, wow, ba 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 Janish says there's some crashes. I'll have to look into that. The good news is I can look on App Store Connect or on Google. Are you looking, ooh, tell me. Ooh, I'm getting like feedback from my users. Uh, Janish, are you looking at it on Android? Are you looking at it on iOS? Let me know so I can hunt down those crashes. Um, cool, bum, 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 bum. And the interim move the icon up. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, here's another fun thing. My app has Lottie animations in it. So let's go back to main camera. My app has Lottie animations in it. So when I click on something, see my little, my little SVG animation that was happening there? That's nice, isn't it? Watch, boom, ooh, uh, boom, boom. There's a little nice Lottie animation. That was so easy to do inside of Bravo. All I had to do was come in here and create a loading state. I titled it state loading on the artboard. I drew a gray rectangle, whatever I wanted it to be. And then I went out and I got a Lottie file from Lottie files. Um, and let's look up some Lottie files. Boom, boom, boom. You can look up any Lottie file that you create, or you can look up here, let's go to free animations. Okay, so you can grab any one of these animations like this. And then you literally just grab the URL right here and you pop that in and that thing will be animating itself up inside of your application. That's it. That's Lottie and it doesn't have to be like a loading animation. You could put it anywhere. Like I could, I could have, if I wanted to on, I don't know, here, if I created my, like this splash screen, I could make an animation out of that on my, on my category screen, if I wanted to have something spinning and whizzing around, I could totally do that. It's up to me, which is pretty cool. Okay, Janish says there's some crashes on Android. I actually did see some crashes in my Google uh, console. So I'll have to take a look and see why that is. Um, ooh, uh, somebody says they have an app idea that has different languages. How can I switch languages and have content in multiple locales? That's a great question that I don't know the answer to. Um, I'd like to know the answer to that because it'd be very, very cool. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. That's a toughie. Um, I don't know how you even do that in, in regular like mobile development. I were, I'm, I'm not a mobile developer, but I'm not sure how you do that. So. Um, okay, boom, 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 boom. Let's see, what other questions do we have? Um, yeah, we had chat-based app questions. What other questions do we have? What, what questions do you have about anything? Let's, let's ask me about the design process. Ask me about the data process or APIs. Ask me about the publishing process. Ask me anything. I would love to answer your questions when it comes to getting your own apps in the app store. Here's what one thing I will tell you before you ask any questions. It is a little addicting to get your app <laughs> in the app store. There was a little bit of a dopamine rush when I got that email from, from the iOS app store saying, it's live, it's direct, it's up. Congratulations, you have an app up there. Um, so that is pretty cool. Um, it's fun, it's exciting. I just, here's what I really love about this is you have an idea and you wanna get a minimum viable product, you could do that. Uh, you can create something pretty quickly, get it up into at least test flight, if not the app store. And then you can literally send that to people and go, hey, test this out. What do you think? What, what should we add? As soon as I got done with my application, I sent it out and I said, hey, what do you guys think of this? I had all my friends and family download it. They went, that's great. I really want to favorite stuff immediately. And I was like, okay, but how would they have known, right? Uh, my friends and family, they're not going to like play with a Figma prototype, um, you know, and maybe if you have some professional friends or associates, they would play with a Figma prototype. But in my opinion, this is even maybe a little bit easier than a Figma prototype because I don't have to spend all the time connecting and making sure everything's all right and perfect. I literally just, I, I create the templates, connect the data, build everything. And then they're looking at it with real world data and going, wow, this feels great. There's no lorem ipsum in it. A suit from Men's Warehouse, which is kind of prefabbed and a custom suit from a tailor that measures you and makes sure everything's right. There's always gonna be that difference, right? Um, can you have a list with filters for a festival so that the user can pick the stage and venue and filter the data on the list. Yes, you absolutely can filter. That's one of the things I'm actually going to be working on. So I'm going to be adding a search field to my game uh, so you can search for any game. Um, and right now in my app, you can only see, you can only see top 100 games, hot games and news. Well, if you go back over to my database, 
I have, where did I put my database? If you go back to my database, you can see I have a lot of other games that don't necessarily, uh, they don't qualify as a top 100 game. See that one? So right now, like the only reason this is in the app is because it's a hot game. But like some of the other ones that are not, like this one, it's not, they're not displaying in the app right now. That stinks, I don't want that. I want every, I wanna be able to have everybody upload their games even if it's not a top 100 game and I wanna have a tab for you that you can go to. So I'll probably have another tab called all games um, and then you'll be able to come in here and see all of those games, just boom, all the listings and I might change the way the listings look. But then you'll be able to search by title, search by name. So that's one way. I know there's also a way that you can filter um, let's go back over here. Boom, this is the Bravo Studio Help Center. Um, be brave, be Bravo, I like that. Um, okay, and let's do a quick search for filter because I saw that and it was interesting. Ah, search and filter. Here is, okay, so what does it do? It turns a text box into a search field. Um, there, uh, when you start searching, then it will search, start filtering things down. There was also another way that you could do it. You could also filter in other ways. So hmm, 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 hmm. there was an example. I'll have to find it and I'll put a post somewhere else about how to how to filter things down. But there was there's some examples of how to do that as well. So yeah, you should be able to filter things because I want people to be able to filter things without complex interfaces. I want people to say, hey, I'm searching for a game that is two to four players and is all of, like is a family game. Boom, show me a list of those. That's like probably one of my big next steps inside the app, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. There's another issue. Somebody else is saying there's an issue with find the game. It's probably an Android. I gotta figure those things out. The good news is, hey, if I find a problem, it's something I need to fix. It's as easy as updating my Figma file. If there's small fixes, like move the button, re-upload my Figma file to Bravo, and it updates in the app. If I need some sort of big functionality, like I'm gonna, when I turn on notifications for Android, I have to ask, add credentials and certain things. That, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a new build of my app and then push it to both app stores. That's the way we do that. Um, user specific filters. Hmm, I don't know, what do you mean? Fill any by user specific filters, that'd be interesting. Um, can, since we're covering filters, is it possible to also sort things A to Z? Can I also sort by location, distance, places? Yes, there's different ways to do that. You could create that functionality in the app to sort things or like I did, you could sort things in your database. This is one table, this is board games. These are all just different views. So I'm playing with ways to kind of categorize and do stuff. So for instance, my hot games list, let's go look at it, check it out. My hot games list in my data library is literally the same list as like top 100. I've just, I've customized the API call to take the view of top 100. What view of top 100? This view of top 100. Case sensitive, spelled exactly the same way, exactly the same way. So for my hot games list, I said, hey, only show me hot games, right? Well, in my database, what did I do? I came into hot games and I said, hey, filter it where hot games is checked. So anytime I check hot games on something, it's gonna appear in my list. Ready? Let's try it out. Let's go back to all games. Let's say right now I think this game, A Feast for Odin, is a hot game. It is not currently on my, in my application, it's not currently on the hot games list, okay? At the very top, there's a game called Aquatica. It's this blue, it's this blue game right here, okay? Now, if I take A Feast for Odin and check at hot games, it shows up in hot games, right? And then there's a Feast for Odin. If I move it to the top, let's say I wanna feature it and highlight it, and I come back into my app, and I pull to refresh, boom! I just replaced data on the fly, and it's doing all that filtering information for me. Pretty dope, easy way, um, easy way um, to kind of filter things down. So you can see, I'm also, I was playing with, hey, um, what if I created categories called category worker placement, category dice rolling, and then I just went and said, I make sure that the mechanic is a worker placement game. What's a mechanic? That's the style of game. So I've, I've plugged in all of these like two or three kind of game types for each one, and I've said, hey, as long as a game has one of them that says worker placement, pull it up in the list. So these are these have commonality between them. So I can create a bunch of categories like that. That'd be pretty easy, right? Um, that's one way to filter things 
And then when I make that call, it'd be very, very easy to do. All I'm doing is just now I'm going to say, hey, not give me hot games, give me category worker placement. Now, that's probably not the efficient way to do it because then at the end of the day, I'm going to have a gajillion like API get requests just for the categories versus finding some smart way to uh, use that filtering, um, like the filtering feature inside of the app itself. So that's probably the better way to do things. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, can we set a list with a specific sorting and filters, but the user is able to change the filter applied? Yes, there's a way to do that. I just can't find the link and where that is, but there is a way to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little exploring together. I'll post some links later um, on my social media on where you could find that. Or maybe Pedro's here. He can figure out um, where, where that link is. Can you get the app without publishing it on the stores as standalone apps? I'm going to try to answer your question. You could just build the app, push it up to the app store and then run it in test flight and send an invite to your friends. And you have like a private app, but they would have to download the test flight app in iOS boop, like that. Uh, I can't click backwards. And then there your app appears. They'd be able to install a test version of what's on the app, uh, on Apple connect or, or app store connect or whatever. Um, and then only they'd be able to use it. So that's a way you could do like a private app, I think. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I make functions with Bravo like dates, tasks, locations? Yes, absolutely. You can dates, tasks, locations. You can totally do that. They're going to do maps soon and graphs soon. So they are just rolling out features. So I think this is a great, a great train for you to jump on board if you want to build mobile applications, right? So you should definitely, definitely jump on board. Um, like an app file, APK. APK is what you have to do. I'm trying to answer questions. APK is what you need to do for uh, Android. Um, so that's a really easy thing to do too. Once you publish your app, you're ready to go. Come over to Bravo Studio, come into your app, Let's go back to the one of the other ones. Come into your app like this. Say, hey, I'm ready to publish it. This You're going to get the debug APK. Bravo Studio is going to package your files and email you a link. And that's what you upload to Google Connect. This one, there's a whole process that you, ha you have to do. But you're going to, whoop, you're going to em enter in the name once you're ready to publish iOS. Name, version, build number. You got to go through a whole process. That's video number four in the series of getting all your bundle IDs and P12 certificates and mobile provisions, one signal provisions for notifications. And then you can get your IPA. Then you send it up using an app called Transfer. You create an app inside of App Store Connect after you've created your uh, Apple developer account. Uh, you transfer it up, it finds its home. Boom. Now all of your package of your, your files and everything for your project is up there. And then you can use test flight, push the thing live to the store, submit for review. That's kind of the process. Um, okay. Woo. There's a lot going on. That was a long explanation. Sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or yes, Pedro brought up a good thing. You could just use it in Bravo vision and you can send somebody a link to see it in, in their Bravo vision. So you can give them access. I believe they actually have to scan a file to, uh, to share that thing. So that's the thing you could do as well. Totally. You can come up here to share, um, and invite them to it just like that. How easy is that? Okay, cool. Um, let's see any other questions. I, well, you know what, while we're doing this, I'm going to work on a few things. Okay. Uh, there was one thing I really wanted to add to my app, which is just the other day. Here, here's a really cool thing. I launched my app and then I have this consistent bottom navigation and that navigation had to be on every single screen. And then literally two days after I launched my app, they came out with a feature that says, hey, just put no menu on a screen and then you can deny that menu to show up on certain screens. So that was really, really nice. Because now when you click into a game, I don't have to have that. I don't have to have that menu at the bottom. It's just the button. So it feels very, very immersive and full screen. So I just added that tag and it updated immediately. That was pretty cool. I'm going to do a similar thing because they just launched. Where is it? Reveal animations. Okay. So let's go back in here. Let's go to the master task list. And we had, no, nope, not the forms. We have these new reveal page animations that I want to try out. I want when you load right now, let's see. Currently when you load, um, bop, 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 bop. 
when you load a screen like this, okay, when you like go from screen to screen, it loads things, it just snaps them in, right? Like, and and that that's all it's doing. And I, that's okay, I, I just, I would like some fancy animations on all the stuff inside, right? So what I'd like to do is I wanna slide top, let's do it heavy, let's see what that looks like. Animation, slide top, heavy, okay? So I literally just copied the tag there, okay? We have all of our stuff here that's already on it and these are getting a little long, but that's okay. I'm gonna pop that in on each one. Let's see if this is the way you use it. Every time you use something for the first time, there's always some learning curve. So here, I've added the tag. Oh my gosh, I'm doing all of that with just my face highlighted. So let's go back. I added the tag to each one of my artboards that I want it to be represented on, right? I put animation, slide top heavy. Um, and if you wanna see what these actually look like, you go in and you can go to the sample apps, download the transitions one, where did it go? Projects, here it was the Bravo sample reveal animation page. You can find that in the documentation. And then when you open it up, it has all the screens. What that allows you to do is open up Bravo Studio and play with each of these animations to see what they look like. All these little elements will slide, animate, wiggle, zoom, do all that kind of stuff. So we've added the tag. Now I'm going to update from my latest Figma file, okay? Also, if you update and you ever get little notifications, an error notification, it'll tell you, hey, you did something wrong, but I have no errors. So, so, technically speaking, I should get animations on each one of these, should I not? Boom, 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 boom. I don't know, let's try, let's go open up Bravo Studio, or Bravo Vision, excuse me. And if you are not seeing any updates, it's because I have to long hold on the app and say update with Bravo to get the newest version um, of what's happening there. Okay, so check it out, boom. Did it work? Oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it did? It it played my it animated my loading animation. Interesting. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Check it out. So like now when I click on one, it act oh it worked. Check it out. Okay, I have to. I wouldn't usually do this, but I want you to see my phone. So I'm gonna refocus on the phone. This is gonna get real ugly for a second, everybody. Okay, here's the application. Ready? And click on one. They all slide up, animate style. Check that out. Boom, 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 boom. Everything, oh, it looks good, man. I like it, dude. Okay, so, okay, it's gonna get real ugly for a second as I try to refocus on my face. Sorry, everybody. Hey, that is exciting. It totally worked. When I refresh, okay, like they're all there, but when I go in between, they slide up all fancy schmancy. A little bit of opacity. That's amazing. Imagine <laughs> just having to just put a little bit of work into it. Literally, I just dropped a few tags and I just added animations onto my onto my uh, onto my app. That was great, dude. Oh, that makes me so excited. What other fun things can we add? Hey, what does it look like if I add it to the detail screen? Will each of the containers slide up? Ooh, that's a question. I'm exploring. Um, okay, I'm gonna long hold. Wait, first, go back. I've added the tag. I'm gonna update it inside of Bravo Studio. Okay, it's updating, updating, it's done. Now I'm gonna update with Bravo on my phone. Okay, I'm in Bravo Vision. What happens now when I go to, boom, each of the screens, everything slides up, and yep, those are sliding up. That's real nice. Cool, I click on a game, all the stuff slides up. That might be a little too much though. I don't know. What do you guys think? When I go to a when I go to a game page, all the that's kind of nice actually. You want to have some fun? Let's have some crazy time fun here. Let's mess this thing up, shall we? <laughs> what other things do we have here? Slide right, slide left, spin. Let's spin. This is not gonna look good. I'm just telling you right now, I can already tell that's not gonna look good because you should not be spinning content like like the content that I have. You shouldn't be, you should never do that. 
here we go. Copy. Oh, where, where is it? No menu. Paste in there. What's going on with you? I must not be copying here. Okay, here we go. Copy, come back here, boom, and paste. That's, that's weird. It's not happening. Get on the layer. There it is. Animation, spin, heavy. How ugly will this be for my use case? Probably pretty ugly. Let's update this thing. <laughs> okay, it's updating inside of Bravo. Okay. That's, there we go. I'm going to long hold update Bravo Vision. Okay. What what does it look like? So Joe says speed up the animation. I don't know if I can. Okay. So look, here we are. We're still seeing things uh, slide up in between screens. That's real nice. Then when we click on one, what happens? Ooh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Too much. Too much animation. Nobody's ready for that much animation. Yikes. Yeah, let's take that off. That's bad news. Um, we don't like that at all. Let's go back. Yep. So, hey, with great power comes great responsibility, Uncle Ben said to Peter Parker. And uh, that's the responsibility of not overdoing your animations. But what if we slid left and we did it medium? Would that be a thing? Could we do that? Copy. Let's come in here. I just want to look at one more. I'm just having a lot of fun because I'm playing with new features today. This is a feature I haven't played with yet. Animation slide left, medium. Okay, great. Update that thing. We're testing out animations right now. If you're just joining us inside of the app that I built in Bravo Studio, um, just fade in, Natalie says. Maybe we'll just try the fade in. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to update with Bravo. Come back here. We're updating right now. Okay. Let's see. Tap on a game. I think that's actually kind of nice. Just the medium in from the left kind of thing. It's kind of it's kind of kind of slick. Ready? Watch. Just a little bit of animation. I'm into that. I like it. Just animates the separate individual elements. It feels smooth. Also, again, this is a little bit of a, a UI or, or interaction design kind of lesson because I tap on a game and it actually pushes the whole screen to the left then it makes sense that all the individual elements also kind of slide in from the left. That's a nice feeling. I dig it. I'm into it. So I'm going to keep that one. I like the the feeling of um, of each of the list items, um, boom, 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 like stacking up like that, animating and stacking up because it shows you that there's a list and that you're coming from the list. I like that. And then we push over and we get all the details that slide in. Boom. I just added animations. I love it. I love it a lot. Now, um, check this out this will not i don't believe this will not update right now oh wait a minute i was gonna say it may not update in my live app because it's new functionality inside of bravo i'm just checking uh, don't i don't don't quote me on this does it update no uh no so it's not going to update yet in the live app if you changed the title to something if you you know, a reworked a current layout and it used the same functionality, you wouldn't have to do very much of anything, right? Like it's just gonna update inside of the application. Um, so, I mean, it, like for instance, in our live application, it moved our Feast for Odin, we, we created that a hot game, but it's not recognizing the animations right now. Actually, there's a weird load time thing because I, I feel like it's probably trying so it's trying to recognize the games and all the stuff, but I've put some sort of weird tag on it. And so it's slowing down my app. So what am I gonna have to do? I'm going to have to uh, re-request uh, a new version number or not a build number, I'll probably do 1.0.1. Uh, I'll put in my bundle ID, drop my P12 certificate, my certificate, my excuse me, my provisions in here again, and then get a new IPA. Um, like it's a package of all the files. Bravo will send me the package, I'll transfer it up, and I'll submit for a new build. That's probably what I will do because it's trying really, really hard. Um, yeah, you'll have to send the new updated packages to the stores to see those updates. Absolutely. Yep, correct. Okay, cool. I was right. Uh, Pedro is just uh, making sure that I'm staying on my game here. Um, and to do that, if you guys haven't seen it, we're going to use this app called Transporter. You can see all of the 
delivered packages that I've sent up. It's as easy as as soon as you get your new IPA from, uh, this is the iOS app store. As soon as you get your IPA from Bravo, you just press plus and you add it here and then whoop, it'll try to send it back up to App Store Connect. You create a new build. So I'm gonna do that probably after I get off the stream so to integrate these new animations and so things don't look stiff and I'm not having any problems. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, Airtable external content does update. Yep, immediately. Yep, absolutely. What's the preview font? What are you asking me just for the typography I used? I, I'm using Work Sans in this project for everything. So Work Sans for all body copy, all headlines, everything is Work Sans. Um, Google Sheets is free for sure, yep. I think if you use Google Sheets, then you have to use something called Sheety, which is a way to create an API request from your Google Sheets because it doesn't natively have API requests, but totally you can use Google Sheets. Um, I also, Little Birdie told me that they might be also integrating other other ways to make your database and organize your information, certain ones that I like to use. So, you know, I think what's cool is the Bravo team is trying to create options for everybody. How do you like to organize your information? How, what's your workflow? Are you using Google Sheets? Are you using Airtable? Do you need, also, we didn't talk about this. I'm using Airtable or Google Sheets, but I could have, if I wanted to, I could have just done this. I could have, watch, I could have gone out to Board Game Geek and found the API information. Look, here's the new Board Game Geek API 2 that they have. I could have read some of this documentation and then look, they have, here's like how you get the ID of certain things and here's the, like all the nomenclature of what stuff is. Okay, are you ready to start using the Board Game Geek API? Yes. Um, I would have, here's the root path for the API. So I could just use other people's API. Look, you can go, where's the Spotify API? Okay, here's Spotify, so here's my app, and here's the Spotify web API. We're gonna, they support get, post, put, and delete requests. So for instance, if I wanted to create a Spotify request or application where I created like my personal, I have an idea. I'm going to create a mixtape application, right? Where I'm able to take playlists and put those in a fun, cool, vibrant mixtape format. And I can send my wife a mixtape that I've created for her. It, then it's not just like, oh, there's a playlist in Spotify, but it comes with something cool like animated SVGs that say, I love you. Here's a lovey mixtape for you. I could do all of that. And I use the Spotify URL or uh, API. Boom. Here's the API information, right? Um, and then bring all that information in. So you don't just have to use your own APIs. You can use any public API that's out there as well. Do you want to create a weather app? Do you want to quit, create a music app? Do you want to create a podcast app? You can do all of that using APIs. Okay. So whew, that's kind of the idea. Um, yeah. Use anything. Stream text, Bravo Q and A. Does this app work on Windows to upload iOS apps? I Oh, I believe the answer to that question, Sergio, is you have to have an Apple computer to create applications for the iOS app store because you need Xcode installed. There might be a way, and somebody smarter than me can answer, where you can run Xcode on a PC, but you do have to have Xcode um, installed during that upload process. Certain things need to be on your computer. Also, side note, Xcode is really, really ginormous. It's like 30 something gigs. So make sure you got space on your machine for that. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Firebase is a paid feature. Yes, absolutely. Bravo is free for a lot of the stuff you wanna do. But if you wanna get more complex, it is paid. But again, I think it's worth it. Not trying to, not, <laughs> not trying to like overstep my bounds here, but I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, Joe Dorgu says a virtual machine. Sure, you can set up a virtual machine be running like uh, uh, um, Apple like operating system uh, on your virtual machine. There you go. Smart. Very smart. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Well, I don't know. I added some features, like some animations to my application. Is there anything else we need to do before we go today? Um, yeah. Again, it's only new functionality that wasn't there in your previous build that you have to submit for a new build. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah. So if you had basic page transitions, all that stuff, like all that stuff is fine. Um, I am, however, thinking I made this, uh, 3d icon for, I'm not even showing my screen right now. I made this 3d icon for my application, uh, using Vectory, which is like a 3d program that you can use in the browser. But I really think I want to animate this thing. So, uh, when you onboard, it's like rotating, or maybe I actually want to do a series of onboarding screens. 
that's what I think I want to do is, is like a three part onboarding screen. So stay tuned for that because I might do that in another stream, but um, I think it's important to have like um, a, an onboarding screen. No, I'm sorry, Natalie. I am not reviewing portfolios today. I'm just focusing uh, and doing a recap of the project um, inside of uh, Figma and Bravo Studio. And just giving a quick overview, I was doing a little bit of work on the stream today, updates and answering lots of questions. That's the focus today. But hey, in next week's live stream, we will be doing back to design, um, like design live streams, answering questions and doing portfolio reviews. Um, so hey, let me know if you have any more questions, uh, let me know because we are getting close to getting out of here. Sorry for the technical difficulties at the start of the day. That was a little rugged, um, but <laughs> everything worked out. We we're able to get it going. So. Appreciate you guys. Um, okay, any last questions before we get going or is there anything I need to do? Hey, do me a favor, download the application, um, you know, on your iOS or Android device and leave a review. That would be really, really nice of you if you're watching the live stream, just download Cardboard Nerd for free and then, um, and then leave a little review in the App Store. That'd be really nice. Just go to the App Store listing on either one and leave me a review. That'd be nice to get the app out there, okay? Um, let's go, is it possible to create a fantasy sports picking game. Hmm. Let me dwell on that. Fantasy sports picking game. Hmm. I would think so. I would. Hmm. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. Right. Um, yeah, maybe. But, but ooh, that's diff That's tricky. You. I mean, you'd have to be using like states and making certain things inactive after a player was chosen jose manuel thank you so much for the super chat and for for donating and just saying thank you i'm just, thank you so much you're awesome appreciate that um yeah so I, you probably could you probably could i don't know enough yet about the complex functionality in the next application that i make there's definitely going to be well in this application it's going to evolve there's going to be more complex features where you're going to be able to log in create an account and save favorites so we're going to get there and then um, in the next app, I don't want to tell you what it is yet, but in the next app, I'm going to want people to be able to uh, have some more complex functionality like like posting data to the database inside of the app um, and probably like some more filtering and some intricate use of the database. So I'm probably going to do that stuff in my next application, but uh, it's so cool just to be able to say, hey, I have a plan for another application already and I see the pathway to bring that thing to life, which is pretty cool. Um, on side note, have you used Spline for apps? That would be very cool. So I know that right now I have used Spline. I made a video on Spline. Um, Spline, if you don't know, is a 3D tool. You can render like interactive 3D elements to put inside of web applications and websites. So you can drop it really easy. Watch the video I did. I just dropped it into a code pen in two seconds. So it would be cool if you could embed, um, can you embed like iframes of stuff? Probably not, because that's like web specific iframes. So it'd be cool if we could find a way to embed certain things like, uh, oh, you know what you could do? You just make an MP4 video out of it and play that. That's a thing you definitely could do, right? So check this out. Um, boom, 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 boom. You could do, where is it? Uh, MP4. So in my application, I'm just linking to YouTube videos, but there is a way to literally just put, like add a video that you either hard code here or store in your database. And then it will actually auto play any video. I believe you can do animated GIFs as well. So let's talk GIF. Can you do a GIF as well? Component GIF, boom. So you could animate it, record it, turn it into a GIF like this, and then have that thing cycling and playing. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that for my onboarding. I'm gonna do a three-part onboarding and I'd like to have some little animated stuff. That's a good one. Okay, um, very cool. Thanks for the idea, by the way. Yeah, let's just ways to improve my app. Hey, side note, I, uh, I also, have all of these, I used, excuse me, um, Bravo's uh, assets, store assets kit that they provide uh, just in their documentation stuff to create all of the assets for like all the stuff for like the uh, iOS 
like store, like Android store. So I use those. Um, so that's pretty cool. I also am building a, a website for, I'm not showing you anything. I keep doing this. Let's go back. I use this assets file from Bravo. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, to build all the like screen preview assets for the app stores and the Android store. Um, and then I'm actually in the process of building a little website for the application, which we'll probably be doing that soon too. Um, so that could be pretty fun. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a separate stream. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, is it possible to get the data from the website, not from Airtable? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we did answer that question. You just go out and find any API information. If you know how to get do an API call to your own uh, Airtable, you know how to do an API call to any API, Spotify, Airbnb, whatever. So that being said, just read the API documentation, find out how to make that request, and then boom, you can pull any information you want. Um, okay. And it said Bravo works for launching apps like Webflow for creating websites. Is that correct? Yeah, you could kind of say that. It's like the Webflow of mobile applications. You start from Figma, um, except it's all integrated. Like you don't have to do any... Webflow is great. No, I'm, not, I'm not talking trash. I love Webflow. Um, but you design something somewhere else and then you go into Webflow and you rebuild that whole thing by hand inside of Webflow. Whereas in Bravo, you build it in Figma, you add some tags, export, connect data, and it's done. So it's actually skipping the recreation process for you and saying, you already created it. Why make you create it again? Thank you, Bravo. That's a nice thing. Um, Saral, you dropped a review on the app. You are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Amazing. Okay. Uh, how do you put these apps in the Google Play Store? Watch number four, video four in the series that I just launched. The fourth and final one came out today. It's a it's a bit, it's the longer, longest of the four videos, and it's tedious because I'm just walking you through the documentation. But uh, the documentation is all there, provided by Bravo and a video by me walking through that documentation. So that's how you get stuff. The Google Play Store is the easier one. But I will say this: it was the longer wait time. The iOS uh, app store, uh, I was able to get in 24 to 48 hours. The Google Play Store took something like four days, three or four days. So wait times may vary on the app stores because somebody actually has to physically review your application and get it in. So there are some w little things that are like, that's just inevitable. You can't get around it. Bravo helps you do so much, but it doesn't necessarily help you shortcut the entire process. You can't just like blink like I Dream of Genie and have an app in the app store. You still got to play by the app store's rules, okay? So, all right, everybody. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for joining me on the stream today. Thank you, Joe Dorgu, for being here. Thank you, Natalie B. Thank you to everybody that was here. I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you, Jose, for the very gracious super chat that you gave. You guys are awesome. I love doing live streams with you. We'll be back next week doing probably uh, a normal live stream where we do design and um, kind of interact with you guys in the design and review your portfolios. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Joe Dorger, the name of my app is Cardboard Nerd. I appreciate you all. Hope you have a fantastic day and the upcoming weekend. We will see you soon.